So we're back in the workroom and Monet is defeated again, right? But here is why I think she's having these feelings. Not because she feels like, you know, she's being treated unfairly. She doesn't get, she doesn't understand why the judges aren't getting her dragged. The thing is, Monet Exchange came into this competition on a high. Like she's a top New York queen. I went to her YouTube. I've like heard about her in the drag scene. Like she is a really big player in the drag community, especially in, in New York City. Like the real talk, if you're hitting in New York City, you are at the top of the food chain in drag, right? So then she comes on the show and she's not hitting and she doesn't understand and she's like every time she's getting a critique it's like killing her because Monet is not used to that because Monet is on top of her game the issue here is that Monet is a great performer it's the looks that needs work and I don't think she's understanding that they're not attacking her drag they're attacking her execution of her looks because a lot of them are misses you know what I mean and they're not really hitting to the level that competitors who may not have her comedic abilities or may not have her performing abilities had better drag. So she really needs to understand that it's not about your drag performance. Like you had that. That's why you keep on saying because you slay them lip syncs for your life. It's your look, sweetie. You got to perfect your look. And I'm telling you, once Monet Exchange gets that, she is going to be a top contender on this show. But she's not because the drag isn't matching up with the performance. I'm just going to excuse last week and say that maybe she was in her head. But I've seen this woman perform. She is at the top of the food chain for a reason. She kills it every day time even from blurry like um instagram videos that i've seen i'm cracking up at what she's giving she gives a full show so she may be shocked but the viewers aren't because we're looking at the looks and also i've seen her looks too she's had better looks as well so i don't know i don't know why it's not why she's not getting it and why it's not reading properly to her but i'm telling y'all once when they get that all bets are off homegirl is coming for the crown and she deserves it she's that good real talk look her up this is the thing with Miss Cracker, right? I feel like Miss Cracker is that, that like unicorn, right? On this season. She's that unicorn that nobody's, or they're editing us to not really pay attention to because I think she may have won the competition. I really feel like the reason why Miss Cracker hasn't won challenges is because they're saving her and guys it's a tv show right i'm not saying the game is rigged but they're saving her for a bigger you know moment on the season i really really do believe that because i just do not i just can't fathom why she hasn't won yet she can't fathom why she hasn't won yet and the only explanation is it's a TV show. You, they want to keep us in. They want us to, you know, have this sort of suspense and not really know what's going on. And I don't think it's anything like All Stars. I feel like they messed up with All Stars when they gave uh, the queens the opportunity to pick who would go towards the end. I don't think it's like that. I think they know who they have. I think they've seen how they perform on challenges and they're just like, you know what? Let's hold her back for a second because she's going to pop. And it's, you know, it's a TV show. So it's, we need that climax. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what's going to happen with Miss Cracker because it doesn't make any sense why homegirl isn't winning. The only sense is she's being saved for a bigger episode later down the line. Also, I think that Miss Vanji is coming back. Um, I follow Danny Pellegrino. I don't know if uh, you guys know who Danny Pellegrino is, but he has a, a really popular podcast and his Instagram is hilarious, his Twitter is hilarious. But I was watching um, one of his, I think it was his Instagram video, and he did an interview with Miss Vanji. And in the interview, he mentioned um, to Miss Vanjie, he said, are you coming back on season 10? And as soon as that question was asked, Miss Vanjie's management, <laughs> okay, mother's coming up. Miss Vanjie's management was just like, oh, we're not going to answer that question. So I think we may get Miss Vanjie back on the season, which makes total sense. Like, how could they not bring Miss Vanjie back? She's on the damn episode anyway. Every episode, you know, they're talking about Miss Vanjie. And anybody who was able to get that kind of reaction out of RuPaul, Come on, you don't think they're gonna bring them back? Please, Miss Vanjie, <laughs> Miss Vanjie, I love her. Oh, she's, I don't, I don't think she's gonna win this season when she comes back, but she's gonna kill it on All Stars. You are like Shangela 2.0 and I am so here for it. Work. Sitting on a secret. I'm black. <laughs> Um, this was a cute mini challenge. Um, it was also hella shady. I can't believe they had them sitting on eggplants. 
and traffic codes. <laughs> Aquaria was the stankest, okay? <laughs> Mother kept them legs open. And why would y'all have Eureka sit on a bag of chips? I mean, this was such a shady challenge, but it was cute. The queens had fun. And I like this. I like stuff that um, they can really have fun with and... I don't know, I felt like this one fit for me. As you guys know, I have not been a fan of a few of the mini challenges, but this one was cute. It was cute. Maxi challenge is creating a panel for DragCon that would, you know, be a DragCon. And I think it's a great idea. I also think that Rue is probably like fishing for ideas. And Rue, if you do pick one of these ideas, I hope that you compensate the ladies. Because I feel like Rue is just like, you know what? Let's see what the ladies come up with, which is smart. You know what I mean? Use the talent pool that you have, but also compensate them heifers if they give you some info. This is also a team challenge. Challenge. So expect some mess and expect some drama. That's why they do it anyway to see how these personalities clash and right off the bat One of the stronger teams that I think are Eureka Monet exchange and um, Cameron right because I think they have a great idea and them being put together because nobody wants to work with them It's going to work in their favor. Eureka has been at DragCon. Eureka likes to talk a lot Eureka is going to be the moderator the moderator they're also going to talk about uh, prior proportionizing. I think the title is a little, <laughs> but you know what? If it works, it works, right? But I feel like the topic is very smart. Eureka is going to talk about how to shape a big girl body. Cameron is going to talk about how to give a feminine shape to a muscle kind of body. And I don't, wait, what's Monet doing? Did we get to what Monet is doing? I don't know, but Monet is naturally funny. So I just feel like it's going to be a really strong team. I also don't see Muscle Queen in Cameron. I think that they just, because people have seen Cameron's abs on like Instagram, it's like, this is the Muscle Queen. Cameron looks very thin to me. I don't really look at Cameron and see muscles you know what I mean Cameron got Blair's body with some abs real talk the team that I think may be in trouble is Asia's team and here is why I feel like that topic has been done before it's done so many times makeup okay how to do this how to do that it, it's it's reading very instructional to me and Rue picked that up Rue was just like make it fun you know what I mean people don't like to be talked to like this is drag hot is a really really fun place so make sure that you're keeping up that energy and engaging the audience and not just telling them how to do makeup tips you can find that anywhere this is drag con let's do something different and let's take it up a notch i don't know if they picked up what rue was putting down monique did but i don't know if the rest of the team did so if it's a team challenge and they're being judged by teams and not individually i think that team may be in trouble i also think that miss cracker's team may be in trouble and I think it's because of what Miss Cracker said to Rue when Miss Cracker was just like, Well, DragCon is just an excuse for drag queens to get together and just have fun. And Rue was like, No, I branded this. Like, it's more than that. And I don't think that Rue appreciated that. And it also, I saw Miss Cracker's response and she did not interpret that that was not only was it kind of a hit to Rue, you know what I mean, and DragCon, but it was also just like, oh, you don't know what this is about and you may be in trouble. So we will see. We will see. But I'm not quite sure because Miss Cracker is really, really talented. So I feel like her team as well, I feel like they can pull it off, but I'm just not sure. I think they're missing the mark and I don't think they're picking up on Rue's clues. We'll see. And also, again, Vixen, you have to be smart. The Vixen keeps on doing challenges with no kind of script, no kind of order. And here it is again, where Rue is just like, well, who is going to moderate and who is going to like lead out? And the Vixen is just like, oh, we'll all be doing something. Another team challenge where Vixen doesn't have a plan. Sis, it don't work for you. You need to have a plan. And I'm interested to see how the Vixen is going to work with Miss Cracker and uh, Blair. Especially if it comes up that Blair thinks that she needs to look in the mirror before she leaves out for them challenges. So, um, let's talk about Monique for a second. She said that she makes her garments 30 minutes before the runway. I was under the impression that the queens got the themes before they came to the show. So, I can understand Monique not having money, right? I honestly get it, but I'm just like... You didn't get the things before you came on the show to prepare, so you're just like making a garments before you go on a runway? I don't know how much of that I believe. I really, really don't, because I don't think that they're telling them the week of and just, you know, somehow they're able to find everything. Now, if they're going through what the queens brought to the show and then making up themes, I'll understand that. But I don't think that they're doing that at all. I think the themes are already prepared. They may change in production. The names may change, but I think they already have the themes 
and they send them out to the queen. Because there's no way that they're doing these challenges, preparing for the runway and making the garments and finding a dress or something that fits for the theme that they throw at them the week of. That would be ridiculous. It would also be interesting, but I don't think they're doing that. So I just don't understand how Monique just was not prepared for this show. Hmm. Something in the water ain't clean. Let me know what y'all think is going on. Like, I just don't understand that. For me, it just does not make sense that she is making everything the day of the runway. What? Also, Cameron looks so good with facial hair. Ah, uh, yes. Zaddy. Not quite, but you know. <laughs> I think I got a shot. Listen, I saw Untuck last week. Don't play. This whole time, I've been like, who does Monet Exchange look like? Because Monique Hart looks like, uh, what's her name? Shay Evans from uh, I, The Flavor of Love. Like, spitting image, right? But Monet Exchange, I was like, you look like an actress. I do not know who it is. It hit me when uh, they showed the picture of Monet Exchange being crowned as like the winner of Miss like, was it Gay Caribbean or Drag Caribbean? I forget the title. But as soon as I saw that picture, I was like, Cheryl Lee Ralph. That is who Monet Exchange looks like in drag. Cheryl Lee Ralph. Do y'all see it? Rue's runway look. I don't know. I like it, but then I don't like it. I think I like it because it's pink. <laughs> It's pink and it's shiny and it's just really princessy and girly and I love it, right? The top bothers me. I love the whole foil thing. I love that. I just feel like the top is not constructed well. You know what I mean? I think it's intentional to look like that, but it just looked like, you know, this was a fitting, you know, and the dress is not yet complete. I just feel like if the straps were more constructed, I'd be all in for it. Like... It looked great. Then we got up here and I was just like, mm, it's a no for me. What did I tell y'all? I told y'all that Eureka, Monet Exchange, and Cameron were going to be a great team. I thought proportionized. I did not like the word, but I thought they had a great theme. I thought with Eureka having experience and being the moderator, because she likes to talk a lot. Thank you, Asia. Okay. That, that was true. Like I felt like they used their greatest abilities to really be able to hold each other up and take this challenge all the way through to the top. I'm still watching. I don't know if they won or not, but I just thought they did a good job. Monet performed at our best ability. She's comedic, right? So she was able to find moments and really work well with Eureka being the moderator, Miss Too Talk Too Much, was able to actually use that, use one of her strongest ability, all that damn talking. She was able to use that as the moderator and she did so well. And then Cameron, although Cameron is quiet, Cameron had great tips and the ladies were playing off of Cameron. They were, you know, giving her, um, they were giving her treats, you know what I mean? Stuff like if she, if it felt like maybe she was going, you know, a little too off center or she, or she was getting too quiet. It was just like, okay, what about this? What about that? And Cameron really was able to hold her own as well. Cause she would have the information, but the ladies really played well together and helped uplift each other when they felt like maybe, you know, each other was going a little uh, low or maybe needed help or whatever. But it was a really great presentation. I actually learned some stuff and then they brought out my baby Bryce. <laughs> so y'all love me a redhead. I don't know where that came from, but mm, yes, I love them fireheads. <laughs> How do I keep on missing these Drag Race audience member shows? Like every time I see an audience on Drag Race, I'm like, where the hell was I? How did I miss this casting? Who, who sends this out? Am I not looking in the right places? Because I have a drag race alert. It's not a game on my computer. So I just don't understand like how I missed this. I would have loved to have been there. Wow, what are you doing? Contact me, get a sister Ah, uh, Asia O'Hara, Monique Hart, and Aquaria were doing so well. And I was at first shocked because I didn't expect them to do that well because they were having issues with Aquaria and then they just seemed very instructional but they were really doing well with the comedy they were really giving great advice and then Bryce came out and just threw the whole thing off it's not my baby Bryce's fault but I just feel like this part when it became very instructional it became a problem and I'm hoping that Monique is not in the bottom because her team may be in the bottom because I think Monique did a great job even with her instructional on Bryce with the highlighter she was still very funny she was still very engaging 
Aquaria and Asia O'Hara are going back and forth with the lip and the eyelash. It's very confusing. The audience can't really keep up and it's just, it's taking such a great panel. And I'm so disappointed because they started off so well. <sighs> what the hell? I knew they should have rehearsed. Aquaria, Miss Cracker, and Blair all over the place. All, it's so uncomfortable to watch. I'm like, Miss Cracker, how did you, what, what's, where are we going here? First of all, they start off with this whole wiggaholic thing. It seems like Blair is not catching the cues because she's starting off late with things. She seems very, Broadway baby seems very nervous. Then they have this like fake banter that is just uncomfortable to watch. And I'm just like, oh gosh. Why you guys gotta rehearse? You can't if you if you're not an improviser, if you haven't done this, you you gotta go in with a plan. Even improvisers go in with a plan. Oh, cracker. So remember when I said when I first uh, started to review this season that I I really couldn't see it for Miss Cracker because I researched all the queens and I found Miss Cracker's YouTube channel and I saw that she also did reviews of of uh, Drag Race and. I was turned off by her comedy because her comedy just was, I felt like her jokes were more insults than jokes. And I feel like that's, that's her downfall sometimes because her jokes can go so dark. I think when her jokes are literal and very smart and very witty, she's not a lighthearted comedian, right? And that's fine. But sometimes her jokes go so dark and it's just uncomfortable. Like she gets uncomfortable and she, I don't think she really knows that yet. Cause I've seen a few of her videos. I'm just like, Ooh, you know, you don't know this queen. So why are you saying that? And it's just, and you're delivering it in a way where it seems real. That's the thing. Like she's not delivering it like it's shade. She's delivering it like it's an insult. And it's like a dagger when it's really not even that. She's just making a joke. She's having to go at it with somebody. But her delivery is just so off. That's what it is. And I think that's what was uncomfortable for the audience and for the viewers to watch. It's just like, but from watching this season, I've gotten to know her and I've gotten to understand her comedy, but it just doesn't always read well. She doesn't have a universal comedic bone in her body at this point and she really needs to just you know work on that you know what I mean like I'm not saying that's not there it's in her like comedy is in her she is very very funny but she just she's just she just she just doesn't read for a universal audience she only reads for the audience who knows her who comes to her shows who have watched her in a couple of episodes and starts to get what she's doing but that's but as a performer that's something she's just gonna to have to work on because that's gonna keep her from certain jobs because people are just gonna be like, she is a nasty person. It's just like, oh no, she's kidding. She just has a very dry and serious delivery. And you don't know if it's a joke or if it's the real thing and that's what the audience was picking up. But I feel like once Miss Cracker gets that, she'll be fine. But at this point, she's in trouble. And when I was watching this, I was like, this is what I was getting from her YouTube channel. It just seemed very negative. And now watching the show, I'm like, oh, this is her thing. But that's because I feel like I know a bit about her at this point. When you don't know, it's a turn off. And as a performer, you have to fix that because not everybody's gonna give you a second chance. Category is Hats Incredible. I like that one. Let's see what this looks Cameron. like. I love it. The hat is everything. I'm not too much of a fan of the outfit, but getting her speaking about it, where she's just like, I like to model myself after, you know, comic book, female comic book characters, because they're, you know, muscle queens, basically. And so I get that. I, I get I get that idea that she has. I get her drag a little bit more now. And I love that hat. If I could find that hat and like a bedazzled gold sis, I'd be rocking that every day. She's not the church mother. She's the freaking deacon. <laughs> I love Rue. I actually like Monet Exchange. Uh, I liked her runway. I really, really did because I got it. I got it. This was a church mother on Easter Sunday. It was the pastor's wife during convocation. I got the whole look. I love the hat. I thought it was actually a step up from what she's been doing. I feel like she's going to, I don't think this is going to make her win. I think it's going to make her safe because it is still kind of like a safe look, but I liked it. I really, really did like it. Eureka looks great. I love it. I love everything about this look, the hat, 
the context don't bother me. It used to bother me with Mayhem because I felt like she did it every runway and it just didn't read well. You know what I mean? Like all the time I was just like, girl, it's too much. This works well with Eureka. I love her look. I love her makeup. I love everything from the hat to the boots to this like, you know, pointed shoulder cape. She looks great and she's selling it. And then there's Aquaria. She looks great. I got the whole theme. I loved it. A magician's hat. She's the bunny coming out of the hat. Perfect. Her makeup, sickening. The whole look, great. Monique, it looks like she made it 30 minutes before the runway. I mean, but the hat is a great idea. I loved her craftiness. I really, really do, but it just, it doesn't look well made. I think the sequence is going to save the sequence. Sequence, Lord ghetto um, and I own it um I think that's really that may make her safe because it is a, a nice garment but it just doesn't look well made and the hat up close it it's it just looks like she wrapped some like you know creative paper on her head and put it on a band or something uh it needed more time but I like the concept I really really do but yeah when she mentioned I make my outfits 30 minutes before the runway I can see it today I see it. Asia O'Hara. Uh, this is the thing, right? I'm gonna break down the look. I loved it, right? There were some issues with it for me. I felt like, first of all, the hat. I don't have an issue with it, but I don't know if you guys are stands of Ikea, but I am. That's an Ikea lamp. How creative. She made that into a hat. I know that lamp. I've been trying to buy that lamp. Every time I go for it, it's sold out, you know? So I, I when I saw that, I was just like, she is wearing the lamp that I love that I can never get. Anyway, great idea, great idea. My issue is the color choice that she chose. I felt like if she went with a white garment and maybe like um, an ashy gray kind of wig, that look will work a bit better, but it's like you have this huge white puffy thing on your head and then you have this white baton with some puffy stuff on it. And then you have like this black and like chocolate see-through dress. I just didn't feel like the dress fit the hair or the makeup, fit the hat or the makeup and the accessory. Colors were clashing for me, but I love what she was doing and I think this is gonna make her safe. So Miss Cracker looks great. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to keep her safe. I love the idea of making the hat, the hair, hair hat or whatever. Great idea, she looks beautiful. I just don't know with her performance if that's gonna keep her safe. Blair is giving me the same thing that Monique Hart had gave me when she did the runway earlier. I like the look. I just feel like the execution is not that great, but I got her idea. When she said, hello, Dolly, I was just like, I saw it. When she walked down, I was just like, okay, Broadway baby, I get this look. I just, I don't know. I felt like I could see the lace pulling and then some things just weren't that well executed. I don't know, just, it, it was a no for me. Vixen, same thing. I like the look. The execution just was not there for me because I could see like s cuts that were like poorly cut on the hat, the rounds and s material was hanging down. I don't know. I just, I, I feel like for season 10, we're just expecting more, but the look was great. I just wish she had more time with it. Did everybody make their outfit 30 minutes before the runway? Because maybe this was a theme they weren't prepared for. I don't know, but this, this look, it just, it, not well executed, but I like that mother starting to pad her behind. I feel like she's reading, you know, comment the Twitter comments because I'm just like, oh, mother is giving us cakes today. Okay. What I tell you, Eureka, Monet, Shane, and Cameron are the top. They were stellar. Their looks were great. They performed very well. And unfortunately, Miss Cracker, the Vixen, and Blair in the bottom because they just did not perform well and the looks were not that amazing and it's oh gosh it's so unfortunate because now I'm just like I paid Mix Cracker to win and I feel like they're doing these like games to like keep her you like mediocre you know what I mean and not really allow her to blossom until the end I still think that's going to happen I don't think she's going home if any of them have to lip sync for their life I feel like Miss Cracker is going to pull it out um if anybody I don't know depending on the song it may be Blair I, I'm not sure but I just feel like Miss Cracker is here to stay I hope so. <laughs> Rue just called a uh, Monet Exchange Cheryl Lee Ralph. Called it. Called it. Well, this just took a turn. Um.
Um, so Miss Cracker gets her critique, and like I said, um, they did not read her comedy as shade or, you know, it just came off mean, you know, it was just mean. And, um, I don't know if Miss Cracker got it. I don't know if Miss Cracker got it. Then you get to Blair and everybody was just like, oh, you were too sweet. And then Blair is just like, well, I, it, her sweetness is a little bit extra because her first sexual experience was a rape. She was raped, raped at a college party. <sighs> You know, the thing that's really sad about that, you know, of course, it's extremely sad that Blair was assaulted, but that's common. There are a lot of men who have been raped at college parties. It's just a shame on it. Like women um, talk about it, you know, are being, especially now are being very vocal about the assaults um, that they have received um, uh, throughout their lives, right? And um, there's such a shame on uh, rape concerning men. And um, although what, what, what Blair said pained her, I'm so glad that she opened up. I'm so glad that she said something about it because I feel like it gives a door. It gives a door to those who were quiet about that. And maybe, I don't know, I haven't checked Twitter yet. Maybe it starts a dialogue because you're seeing somebody who's very visible um, using a platform or speaking about it on a plat on a huge platform about what happened to them. It's very unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. But I just, I really do hope it starts a dialogue because um, there are a lot of damaged men walking around here because they're ashamed on you know being sexually assaulted it ha I you'd be surprised how many men in your life have been sexually assaulted it's very common very common oh Blair oh she broke my heart I don't even want to continue on like how can I find a funny after this <sighs> drag race <sighs> so basically um the issue with uh the vixen Aquaria and um uh, Aquaria uh, Miss Cracker and Blair scene was one that um, Miss Cracker and uh, the Vixen came off mean. Uh, their their jokes did not read as jokes; they read as like digs. And um, Blair was kind of lost in that. And also, they did not have any order; they didn't have a plan. And this is the Vixen's problem. I'm not saying that she is the issue, but I but she always encourages, "Oh, we'll just figure it out." And I'm like, sis, you have to start planning because when you do not plan you always end up in the bottom <laughs> wow so um before i get into it shout out to eureka she won two challenges in a row you go girl like she has really come back with a vengeance like and she's doing well like i don't think these challenges these wins are being given to her Eureka was really good on that panel. Her look was amazing. She deserved this win. She, to me, was the clear winner. And then we get to the bottoms. Blair St. Clair and the Vixen. I'm kind of not shocked though, but I'm just shocked. You know what I mean? I'm shocked that it happened. But when you look at it, Cracker at this state, at this range or rate in the game, wherever, at this level in the game is just a better drag queen, right? Um, but I'm just shocked. I think I'm more hurt because for Blair and then the Vixen didn't see this coming. I don't know how she didn't because the judges talked about how her look, they loved the look. It was just unpolished. Same thing that I said. I need to be on a damn panel. <laughs> Let's work it out. Wow. Let's work it out. But not shocked, but shocked. This was an episode child at Untuck. I feel like it's about to be draining. Let me get some more stuff to drink because I don't know if I'm so ready. So I'm going to say this. I'm still watching. I just stopped after the lip sync. Rue has not given a judgment yet, right? Let me tell y'all something. They both came for that. That they, they both came for that. Rue, they have to both stay because first of all, Blair gave me chills, okay? Worldway Baby showed up and when she started singing, she said, I'm coming out. I, I felt like y'all, real talk, I felt like she was walking out of something into something new and I'm like, Rue, you can't cut her now. She walked out of that mess. Like at, in that moment, Blair walked out of that pain. And she stepped up in this competition for me. And I'm just like, you can't cut that. You, I could feel it. It was just like when Eureka, when she was on her lip sync for her life, like I 
felt that. And I felt that with Blair. Like she gave me chills. But baby, the vixen was not going home. Not on today. She gave it as well. I felt the both of them just. This is a really good lip sync for your life. Because when you hear the song, you think vixen has it. And then Blair shows up. Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. I really hope Rue lets the both of them stay. I don't know who's going home because they both affected me. I, I don't know. I don't know. Rue, please, y'all, I'm so afraid to start the TV again. <laughs> Rue, please let them both stay. Please, Rue, they gave it tonight. Please, Rue. <sighs> I gotta start this damn television. I don't want to. <laughs> your coming out party and I want the world to know this is a declaration of independence from the past now sashay away from the bottom of my heart thank you so much <sighs> well that wasn't the outcome that I wanted oh and guys, it wasn't because she told that story, right? It didn't, it pulled on my heartstrings, but this is a competition. If you're not bringing it, you're not bringing it. I felt Blair. She wasn't, she didn't. <sighs> Damn. Well, Blair, just know this. You're a winner, baby, to all of us, sweetie. And you stepped out of that situation, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do after this show. This might be Miss Congeniality. It's between her and Miss Vanji. If Vanjie don't come back and win the whole damn thing. <laughs> so that's where it ends with our Broadway baby going home. This was a really good episode. I like the challenges. I like the pace of it. Um, I also liked how it was a mix of highs and lows. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a really jam-packed episode, but it was jam-packed full of goodness. And I really did enjoy it. I'm sad to see Blair go because for me, she stepped up and I, I felt like she stepped out of a situation and I would love to see her drag moving forward, having at least taken off a layer of that because her silence was one layer. And I just, I don't know, I just feel like I would have loved to have seen her journey on this show with that removed from her, you know what I mean? No longer holding her back. So it's unfortunate, but there's always all stars, baby. There's always all stars. I had a great time reviewing this show. It uh, it took me on a whole roller coaster, and um, I totally enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you for the following episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. But stay tuned, because I'm also about to watch Untucked. And I'm going to put the video somewhere over here. Check that out. Come see a sister and come back next week. Love you much. Bye, guys.